talk to me about the lack of pass through, Noriel. Great to see you. Between wages and inflation, why is there that disconnect? Well, there is a disconnect because uh, profit margins have risen uh, so much that even if there was an acceleration of wage growth, and that acceleration so far is mild, there is a room for firms to maybe compress the margin, the profit margin, rather than passing to the price level, the increasing cost, uh, given these margins are very high. There is also more competition now. Many people shop online and therefore the pricing power of the corporate sector is low. I think the bigger puzzle, however, is why inflation is so low in spite of an acceleration of growth and unemployment rate being so low and not being much of a slack in the goods and labor market. I think that's a broader question, not just for the U.S., but also advanced economies like Europe, the Eurozone and Japan and so on. Yeah, it is. And then the question is what to do about it. Uh, ben Bernanke talking about a price target, maybe moving the inflation price target to 3 to 4 percent. Maybe that would help uh, give the Fed some room, especially in this low rate environment. What's the solution to it? Well, first of all, we have to figure out what's the cause of it before we discuss the solution. Uh, aggregate demand has been increasing, growth has gone higher. You would have expected that inflation goes higher. That hasn't happened. In the U.S., actually, inflation has gone lower for the last few months. That suggests there are some supply shocks, positive, that are keeping inflation at bay as demand is growing. Maybe globalization, uh, weak labor and unions, uh, technology, innovation, and so on. Now, the Fed has been telling us for the last few months, don't worry, because the reduction in inflation has been only driven by temporary factors, some uh, telecom pricing, some of the medical costs and so on. These are one off and therefore inflation is going to go higher because they are normalizing policy rates. But suppose that instead these factors are more permanent and there is a shock that may de anchor inflation expectation, then the right response will be not to hike more, but to pause or maybe even ease. But the Fed is not willing to do so under the assumption that these uh, supply shocks are only temporary. They may be right or they may be wrong. Their models suggest that there is tightness in the labor market, but these models, as previous Fed Governor Tarullo suggested recently, are not working. So should we look at the models that are not working or should we look at the reality of low inflation? Uh, the Fed might be doing a policy mistake. So if there are structural reasons why inflation will remain lower, what is the proper mechanism for addressing that? Does it rely with the central banks and monetary policy or do we need some sort of structural reform over on the fiscal side? Well, certainly any kind of structural reform that increase uh, potential growth uh, is going to be positive for growth is not necessarily going to have an impact on inflation because higher potential growth implies also you can grow faster without having inflation. But if there is a risk that uh, there are structural forces that keep inflation low, then the right response of central banks should be to fight uh, and be more aggressive in terms of easing to avoid the de-anchoring to the downside of inflation expectation, because otherwise you'll never achieve your mandate of having inflation close to 2%. So that's the right response. Now, the fig leaf for central bank is to say inflation is low only for temporary factor. Therefore, we should keep on normalizing because this temporary factor is going to go away. If they're right, that's the right response. If they're wrong and there are more structural reasons why inflation is going to stay low, monetary policy should be more aggressive rather than exiting faster uh, the normalization process.